motorcade, Summer League Scotty, the two Jalens, Evan Mobley, even Moses Moody. Could all realistically win a projected to be wide open 2022 Rookie of the Year race with OKC's Josh Giddy, along with the co-Summer League MVPs in Sacktown's Davion Mitchell and Brooklyn's Cam Thomas also in the fold. This year's draft class could be one of the all-time greats. This video breaks down the biggest contenders for the award and ultimately predicts who will win it at the end. Before continuing, over three quarters of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you fall into that percentage, help the channel get to 50k by subscribing. Also, leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Leading off with the number one pick, Cade Cunningham, who played pretty damn well in three Summer League games. Cade's poised body language and veteran-esque leadership is evident. His communication and overall awareness defensively has been a nuisance for attacking players. Most impressively though, was how his three-point shot has looked. He did take a hefty 8.7 attempts over three games from out there, but he knocked down an elite 50% of those shots. For the product of the NBA G League, Jalen Green, the most popular player in this year's draft by far, we've seen the rookie modify his game to traps, blitzes, and late doubles. Green's shifty in the pick and roll and has a crafty ability to find seams in opposing defenses. Green's combination of quickness, polished ball handling, and pure bucket getting mentality could be the best of any rookie. He's an incredibly gifted scorer a talented athlete, and an overall gamer. Playing against grown men in the G League clearly helped him last year. From step backs to hesitation three-point pull-ups off screens, Jalen's shot creating is already extremely smooth. Stay tuned to see if I think Jalen can win Rookie of the Year. Cleveland drafted the best big man prospect in the 2021 draft class in Evan Mobley. An active defender with a seven foot four wingspan, who led the Pac-12 in blocks per game, averaging 2.9 rejections per night. At the pro level so far, the former Trojans already displayed the ability to handle the rock in transition. And Kevin Kelly knocks that one away. Here's Evan Mobley leading the break. A cool jams it! As well as handle the rock under intense defensive pressure in the half court. He still has to polish his offensive repertoire, but beastly rebounds in traffic like this. So you really got to make sure when you when you slide into that shot that you know where your feet are. Give you a glimpse of Mobley's overpowering vertical jump. Based off his raw skills offensively, Mobley could have some growing pains, but if he keeps his head on straight, the man is a special big man in this league for years to come. The naturally gifted basketball IQ from Toronto's number four overall pick was on full display in Las Vegas. Barnes was a menace locking up the perimeter, constantly forcing turnovers and full court clamping his matchup. Offensively, his passing and ISO shot creation are two apparent weapons in his bag. Veteran moves like this. He's cutting off the dribble drive on multiple occasions, shakes him with that little fake. Display Scotty's incredible footwork. Having said that, he's not the most consistent or fluid offensive player yet but the Raptors took him because he's got pristine jump shooting mechanics, whether that's in spot up scenarios or off the dribble. His slashing to the bucket with his seven foot three wingspan makes him look like a future Giannis, but can he win rookie of the year? That's coming up. Jalen Suggs may ultimately be looked back on as the best pure shot creator from the 2021 draft class. There's a bit he needs to learn from his summer league debut, like how to properly manage the game at the pro level, but in terms of his skill set offensively, it's more than up to par with pro caliber guards. A fundamentally sound one-two step into his jumpers, quick twitch release, and brave willingness to let it fly makes Suggs an already elite three-point marksman. He uses a nice blend of agility, craftiness, and ingenuity to routinely get into the paint and knock down seemingly impossible shots off the bounce as well. But he's far from a one-sided player. 
The Orlando Magic's fifth pick had a ton of deflections in Summer League and a Sports Center top 10 worthy chase down block, as well as some other highlight blocks. The man is not just an offensive player. Look for Suggs to be one of the top candidates for the Rookie of the Year award. Stay tuned to see if I think he wins it. Shortly after the Aussie, Josh Giddy scored his first Summer League bucket on this drive and dunk, the man suffered an injury which ruled OKC's sixth overall pick in the draft out for the remainder of the tournament. OKC was taking a cautious route with their top pick, who showed off some flashy playmaking upside in the NBL last year. The 6'8 point guard's only 18 years old and could be a special piece for the rebuilding Thunder. We've seen how overseas talents like Luka, Giannis, Siakam, and Simmons have come over and dominated, so it was a nice gamble for OKC's front office to take a chance on Giddy with such a high pick. Don't call him Donovan, Davion Mitchell landing in Sacramento could give the Kings one of the best young backcourts in the league. The Kings needed an upgrade to Buddy Heald at the two guard, and they got that in the form of the Summer League co-MVP, What's clear about the four-year college player and product of Auburn and Baylor is how good his defense is. Davion's timing, pursuit of the ball, and lateral quickness were a key cog in the Kings capturing the Summer League title. Got a long way to go offensively to become elite, but he's solid enough right now to potentially be a dark horse ROI candidate. In Vegas, Mitchell shot 42.3% overall and 47.1% on three-pointers. I could talk about Kai Jones as well, but Charlotte's higher draft pick in the sharpshooting two guard James Booknight has a chance to shine next to the pure playmaking of LaMelo. Michael Jordan's turned it around in recent years for the Hornets organization, developing an extremely impressive cast of up and coming talent. At UConn, Booknight averaged 19 points per game, and that deadly bucket getting carried over to the Summer League. Great pick at number 11 for Charlotte. Jonathan Kuminga struggled with his efficiency in the Summer League. He was the seventh overall pick, but the Warriors' other rookie, the SEC Freshman of the Year, Moses Moody, showed out. The number 14 pick's two-way production should allow him to instantly provide some serious value in Steve Kerr's system. You can just tell that Moody's going to be one of the more underrated rookies this year. The Warriors had a great draft night and a productive offseason overall as well, with the signings of Otto Porter Jr. and Andre Iguodala. Kuminga and Moody should be some instant impact rookie additions. The 6'4", 210-pound Cam Thomas has more bulk on his frame than about every top lottery pick. At Louisiana State University, despite averaging 23 points in 29 games for the Tigers, 26 picks went by in this year's draft without Cam hearing his name. That didn't stop the 19-year-old product of LSU from beasting in the Summer League. He led the league in scoring, and along with Davion Mitchell, was named Summer League MVP. Now for my early prediction for the Rookie of the Year. Remember, it's just my take, so let me know yours down below. Scotty Barnes has a long way to go with this scoring, but if he can turn around the Raptors, lock up the perimeter, and play somewhat efficient, he'll be in the race. Evan Mobley has a similar narrative to Barnes with the Cavaliers. Barnes and Mobley are two inevitable stars and potential superstars in the future, as in one to two years from now. That amount of NBA experience means everything to raw talents with an insane amount of untapped potential. However, I think with how NBA-ready the games of Jalen Green, Suggs, and Cade Cunningham are, plus the main scoring roles they'll be in, it's going to be those three that elevate into the favorites for the award. I've gone on record in previous videos saying Barnes could be the Giannis of this draft. I think he will be. Mobley will be looked back on as the top big man, but we're talking the Rookie of the Year. And the winner of this trophy has one or two NBA-ready dominant qualities that can take over games. As good as Motor Kate is, and I think he's really good, I made an entire video on it, but I actually think this turns into a race between the Jalens, who've proved they won't need any experience to develop their games. Personally, I'm predicting the former G League prospect Jalen Green of the Houston Rockets takes home the trophy. Really love the guy's ability to pick apart defense, and the balance on his jumpers is incredible. As a Raps fan, of course, I love my boy Scotty, 
I really want him to win it, but I'm going with Jalen as my official prediction. That's just my take though. If there's a rookie I should have talked about, let me know in the comments. And of course, leave your prediction for the 2022 Rookie of the Year. Hope you have a great day. D-Flow signing off.